Oh, it always looks really lovely. <laughs> it always looks really exciting when I see this on screen. It looks so good, the background. Look at that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. So I hooked up with Sharon last week and I said, do you mind if I come and do a live at the pottery with you? Because we haven't seen you behind the scenes for such a long time. And I just want to say, first of all, a little introduction because there's lots of new people finding us because we run the workshops from Thursday. So hello, everyone who's new and old and who's been following us forever. But those who don't know, so I'm Michelle and I founded United Art Space and I'm Sharon, Sharon and I'm an my, artist. Yeah, yeah, Sharon was my art tutor actually years ago <laughs> and we have interweaved paths ever since and Sharon was a big help to me in the early days setting up United Art Space and still is. She is my muse. So Sharon is a really good friend of mine. You'll hear me talk about Sharon a lot. <laughs> And I wanted to come on because we are running the workshops on Thursday. And I thought it'd be really nice, actually, to just hook up with Sharon, talk about art, but also for all the Make Your Mark students, Make Your Mark is a course that Sharon runs once a year. And we had lots of people take part in Make Your Mark. And I thought it'd be really good for you to see how Sharon is progressing. So let's um, tell us, by the way, before we delve in, tell us where you're tuning in from. Tell us uh, what art you like to make as well. There's lots of friendly faces that I recognise showing up. Hello, everybody. Yeah, Make Your Mark. Lottie did Make Your Mark. It is an oh. incredible course. Hey, Susie. Oh, I really missed having Sharon oh, in my life. Oh, <laughs> Susie, that's such a lovely thing well, to say. Yeah, we've got her for the next maybe hour. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, I, I've spoken to a lot of people recently and Vivara, if you are watching live or the replay, asked me a great question last week. And it was, I'm working on sculpting using copper and she's been focusing on fish. And that was her starting point. And now she's feeling like she's exhausted fish. And she's feeling like, I've done this. I've got a lot from it. She's learned surfaces because of focusing on fish. And she knows that she wants to focus on copper. And she was starting to select and reject, which is yeah. one massive thing that Sharon teaches. And that's why I wanted to talk with Sharon, because if she shares her process now, it's exactly what Vivara was asking and what lots of other people have been asking me as well is that point where you just don't know what direction to go in, where you've maybe exhausted an area and you're starting to feel a bit flat now and like, oh, where's this going? Or you are maybe the opposite. Maybe you're trying all the things and you don't know how to focus it down. That was another question I got was, you know, I've, I've got so many different directions that and ideas that I'm struggling now to know where to take this. So these questions were great. And I kept saying to everyone, tune in on Tuesday, tune in on Tuesday. Because if Sharon shares now her process, which is going to be so valuable, and just maybe we recap from where you started at the beginning of the, of the year. Yeah. And um, maybe we'll start as well with what you do, because there's going to be lots of people um yeah, like Kathy, hello, I only found you a few days ago. So welcome here, Kathy. So we're just having some chat. Uh, Ryan says, I'm just here for the banter. <laughs> me too. <laughs> you're, in a good, you're in a good place then. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> we do like to have a bit of banter around here and things go off on a tangent sometimes and we do go off on random conversations just to warn you. So <laughs> you <laughs> so. So let's talk first then, like what artist are you for those like Kathy who's not come across before? Okay, um, I am, hi guys everyone, I'm Sharon and I am a figurative sculptor. So it means that I make figures out of clay and I fire them. So I'm a ceramic artist. Um, I feel like I'm the, the bridge between the pottery world, which uh, those people who make things out of clay and they fire them and a bridge between the pottery world and the sculpting world which are people who use clay but they don't fire it mm. so that's it in a nutshell um, mm. so I use clay I fire it and I make figures and heads and faces mm. um, and it's about the human condition and about the human experience whether it's dreams um, whether it's 
whether it's um, physical representation of ourselves, mm. our exterior, but most of it is about interior and our feelings and our expression. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, and it's something that I've always loved to do from a child, always got my hands in mud, always making, There's that. that's the thread. Um, so it's all about the making the hands. I can't sit still. I have to have something to do with my hands um, for for my mind to slow down and focus. So mm. it's a really great, um, a really great material for mm. me to use. It is so therapeutic, yeah, isn't it? it clay. Is. clay is really Have clean. you all used clay? <laughs> oh gosh, I love it. Just talk about the fidgeting. This is why I've got these fidget. fidget. I've got fidget, fidget rings now. <laughs> fidget rings are great. My friend had a fidget fidget ring. Well, these are supposed to be like meditation rings as well. We mm. just yeah zone out a little bit. So very good. They're very so, good. Whatever we do, mm. just just to keep our mind less the chatter inside the brain yes and more outside in the art so and it was the beginning of the year you asked the question yeah can i backtrack oh, one yeah. one little step <clears throat> just for those who are possibly patriarchy rants who, <laughs> for those who are probably feeling um like they're doing lots and lots of things sharon was that person I was not that long ago you know Really, yeah. was it that Sharon was making the boats and the paintings and the sculptures and everything and exhibiting it all? And you decided to rein it back because this is what we teach is become known for something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. this is what we're going to talk about in the workshops, yeah. but that's what you've become known for, and it's really accelerated your, yeah. your profile now and your success and where you are. Is so at the beginning of the year. What was your focus and how, how do you work? So let's do this. Mm. Um, let's scroll it around. Do, 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 do. So this is like my vision board. I still draw and paint. So at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning, mm. I drawed, I, I drew, so I drawed, silly. Um, I drew and I painted and I sculpted and I showed everything. The, the change has been, I still do that, mm. but I only show ceramic work. Yeah. So you still so do I'm all still your things. Doing all my things, and this is what I say to people: you can still do all the still things. Do it all. What you so put this out is into the world, all yeah. of the stuff. So I draw, I search, mm. I research, I sketch. Look at all I, this, and this is like my vision board. So this is what you can't see, and this is what we're looking at, which is great light. I'm not sure if you can see that to my son as well. We'll just go that bit as well. <laughs> so this is part of my. I love how we've got a pair of legs in the back. Uh, oh yeah, a pair of legs, pair in, the of legs in the background. <laughs> I'm working on some legs. <laughs> And um, and that's the other side of the pottery workshop. So um, this is like a, it's, I feel that this is my very safe space and somewhere that I can play without fear of being judged or watched. So um, this is my workshop and it's great. So on my, on in my safe extension of my brain, I have a, something that's called a vision board, which is what you have. We all mm. have vision boards. Mm. And on mine are just reminders of keep it simple. I've got one here. It says make it simple, make heads, bodies, figures until you're really good. Your work is about life and being human. So that's just a reminder of me to get rid of all the clutter in my brain. I want to do everything, but I can't do everything. I have to select. Mm. Um, the word of this year, which um, is movement. Movement is my word for this year. So um, I did sketches, I produced um, a mind map, I researched movement, I explored what movement was for me, both in terms of external movement, as in a physical movement, and an internal movement of a shift in your mind or in your, in your heart or in your world or making changes to how, how you behave, you know. And that is a paradigm for how the world is shifting as well. So we've just been in lockdown and now we're coming out of this you know this stillness which which i find is quite relevant people are asking so, to see your vision board again so oh, as you're yeah. chatting shall i spin it yeah, around go and, for then, it. and then sure if you can see it so that's it's cool. all an extension so here actually this is where i'm at at the moment so i sketched i drew i explored i researched I looked at birds i looked at flight i looked at swimming i wanted to go bigger so i've produced work that is bigger these are the smaller sketches and now I'm making work bigger um, and that was my that was my aim for this year so that's my intention and I feel like I'm just about achieving some of those intentions and those goals that I set myself early on in the year so the the main goals in the beginning of the year were about big, move, movement bigger you wanted bigger, to go bigger scale bigger scale 
and um, create more movement. Create more movement yeah. And that came from you while swimming, didn't it? Yeah. So the yeah. I remember Sharon going while swimming and so swimming. I looked at swimmers. I looked at the experience of being in the water. I want also to to be less um, less accurate. I don't want it. Don't want my work to be so restricted in terms of it looks like a realistic foot uh, or a, or a leg or an arm or or a face. I want it to be kind of dreamlike and remove remove the figures. In fact, I'm going to show you one that I think is just about there. The rest of them are sold. I just had a major show, um, so they've all gone. Yeah, it's a new home now, which is great. Did you sell them all? Oh my God, most of them I've got. Um, I had a Neil Sellett show. It's really great. Oh, oh, I've just got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about Sharon and her shows as well because it's really useful to hear from an artist who's exhibiting in multiple places. In fact, you'll see Sharon's job board over there. We'll so, show you the job board in, a, just in a minute. To, Let's just want to show to you. This. So yeah. I'm trying to yeah. get rid of the features. So actually take them away. I'm not sure if you can see that. So you can just have the suggestion of the head. This is still accurate, still too accurate for me, but um, I want them to be more removed. So you're abstracting now. Yeah, so faces. taking away. Going from, should we, can you see in the background there, these are some of the older pieces, aren't yeah. they, where you've re yeah. got the refined so features. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to. I yeah. Feel, yeah, so that was, that's it. And that's so, it yeah, in you're working in collections for yep. those who who maybe don't know so yeah so work. so Sharon started the year with some exhibitions in the pipeline but can I just say as well it was only five years ago where Sharon had no exhibitions she was putting her work into art fairs not selling anything and I reiterate this because it just yeah. shows what you can progress to in such a short space of time yeah. where now Sharon has sell out shows and big commissions and um yeah, I've got Things a really good can... commission, actually, a really huge one. Yeah. I can talk about that now. Can you? Mm, Brilliant. Yeah. So before we move on to the commissions and the exhibitions and things like that, in terms of then the way you work, in terms of you have that starting point, mm -hmm. and so in January you knew you had the exhibitions coming up <clears throat> and you made that time to play and explore your starting point and think, right, I want to increase the scale yeah. and add more movement. Um. And you created all that work. It went off into the shows. Yeah. And now you're coming to the end of that and you're coming back to the starting point yeah. again, aren't yeah. you? And that's where Vivara is. And I just wanted to talk about this process. Yeah. It's the design cycle, which is what Sharon teaches in Make Your Mark. But have you got any tips for someone like Vivara who is now Feeling at a that bit stage? Exhausted. But it feels, it's like you've exhausted an idea, but then there's also that uncertainty. Yeah. Now, you oh, do you so feel hard. this? Because you've got a show... So you've got pressure now because you? you've got to create the work yeah. for the show. Yeah. And so when you're, t you know, changing things as well. But <coughs> I was explaining your process to Vivara and I said, you know, it's going back to the basics again of gathering. And that's yeah. what you do, isn't it? Starting to gather and then you're finding a new starting point. Is that what you, yeah. you're doing? So um, first of all, it's really hard to make art. It's really the hardest thing ever. And I've got to say, those of you who are on here, you're doing brilliantly. Just keep at it, keep at it. You've got to find your truth. And then eventually what oh, you're speaking nice. will find your people. You know, so this is where I'm at. So it's about confidence and it's about belief and it's about finding your people who are um, supporters. Um, so people like Michelle and each other. It's really important to have your people around you just to boost you when you're feeling a bit flat. That would be one tip. One mm. tip is stick in there. Another tip, if you're feeling like you're exhausted, have a break. Mm. I'm not looking at you much, yeah. Michelle. <laughs> have a break. Just have Stop. yourself some time Stop. out. Yeah. Just time out. Mm. Then once you've had a break and you've had rest, it yeah. doesn't mean that you're going to give it all up and you're going to start something new. What you're going to do is you're going to hopefully... Find a spark again that because it's your truth, you love that clay, you love that wire, whatever it is that you're using, your paint, the particular subject matter, mm. anything that is that's your thing, your, yeah. whatever your thing is, um, that will give you another spark again, and then you will you will reignite it, and it will take you on a, a slightly different pathway, but using a similar kind of thread mm. that will that will help you with the other. 
um, yeah, work yeah. we produ- produced previously. Yeah. I hope that makes yeah. sense. So it evolves, doesn't it? And that's where <clears throat> Sharon's mantra, which I use all the time now, select and reject, which is a whole module in her course. It's so useful, those those two words, select and re- well, three words, select and reject. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just, it just helps. It's having the confidence yeah. to do it as well, though, isn't it? It's really hard. Last yeah, week, I've got to yeah. say, um, I so two weeks ago, I had a, like a couple of weeks out. I just thought, oh, just, I'm exhausted. I need some time off. I just want to go, just go and join the garden and play with the children and, you know, watch them grow while they, well, I still can because they're little. Yeah, one of them is. yeah. Um, and then I got back into the workshop. Um, last week was, oh, the first week was not last week. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? We're on week two now. So last week was week one for me back mm. in the workshop. Mm. And week one was an absolute disaster. I got so annoyed. Everything went in the recycling bin. Nothing came out. And I went home a lot. And I drank gin, <laughs> which is not good. It isn't. But it I just was not in a good place. Mm. This week, mm. I thought, no, just have some time off again. Have a rest. Go back into the workshop. And yeah. it's about just slowing down. Yeah. Because Noticing. it's like a muscle, isn't it, when you dive back into something. Yeah. And if you dive straight like, back into the deep oh, end, it's hard. My hands don't work. My head has got this idea in it. And I don't Can't know how get to it get out. it out. And it's not working and I get really annoyed and then and then I'm kind of doing the blame game when anyone else is coming into the workshop and they're going hi Sharon have you enjoyed your workshop I'm like just go away I just want to I just want to get some hands on clay don't speak to me (laughs) that's how I feel you know it's and it's real Louise Louise took about your mark hello Louise I'm going to go through some questions um that I've seen coming in for Sharon um so let me just find them. Um, yeah, Susie says, oh, I miss it so much. Oh, it's so good. Hello, uh, everyone. I'm hello, just hello. seeing. Hello, hello. Uh, Katie says, yes, big fan of Sharon's hello, work. Hello, Katie. Um, Helen says, it's lovely to meet you. Banter, hello. banter, banter, David. <laughs> um, ah, Sarah's just joined in the Clay Adventure. I Yay. remember you saying that you wanted to. Um, yeah, Marita's obviously a big, <laughs> big clay lover as well. Mm. Um, oh, I just saw some questions. So let me just see. Okay, this is Stacey. And Stacey does a lot of breastfeeding paintings, which are just incredible. She's created this big, massive collection of breastfeeding work. And it's oh. just the best. I want to do figure out of clay based on the subject I paint breastfeeding, but not brave enough to try it yet. Try it 2D. So draw into clay. So get a piece of Ooh, clay yeah. and just flatten it and then just draw into it first of all. And then yeah. that will give you the, the hands-on, mm. um, uh, but you'll still have your drawings in there. And then you can just use slips and oxides and washes and or acrylics, just get someone to fire it for you and then and go for it from there. And then eventually your flat surface, your flat surface will then stand up and then you can then start adding things to it. So then it becomes three-dimensional form. I can see everyone trying to trick us that there's a spider behind us. There's a, that was a running joke. <laughs> Great question here. Okay. <laughs> well, don't. There's it was of... from Monday. Yeah. Someone found a spider. So do you feel that with the success of the sculptures, would, will you show, develop the other media, i.e. leveraging the fame of one to forward the other art? So do you feel that... I, I think this is a bit like what you're doing with bronze. So the success of the sculptures... Would you? Will you show, develop the other media? Yes, I will. Um, so It's a great question. It is a great question. I think what it's that how famous can you be until you, you know, you can make whatever work you like and then everybody will love it. <laughs> Got the artistic you know, license. Artistic yeah. license. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe next year, I know next year or the year before, the year after, so 2023, I'm, I'm planning shows already. for. So it's a two-year um, wow, you're working two years out now. Yeah, at least two or three <laughs> years sometimes. Amazing. Um, and that one, one of them will be 2D and 3D. So it'll be drawings, paintings or works that are two-dimensional as well as the three-dimensional forms, yeah. So um, yeah, I think some sometimes, it's, sometimes it, it works and sometimes it just doesn't. So sometimes, I don't know, when... My drawings are very, very different to the paint. Uh, drawings and paintings are very different to the sculpture, but there are some kind of links in there. Um, so what I like to do is I like to have one. So I was trying to do this. In fact, let's let's talk about this in a in a better way. Mm-hmm. Um, so in in part of my in part of my um, work, I was I was just 
playing around with this weight. So I wanted some some movement. So here I wanted this this movement here um, and some angles, but you, it's very difficult to get that in in clay because the clay collapses. It it just there's it's weighty and it just wants to flop. So it doesn't quite work. So the it's not a working drawing. It's just an idea in in a drawing, and then hopefully some of those elements will mm. then feed into the clay work. Mm. So in that. this one here, I figured out that if I can get some space, this one, all of this is going to be chopped away. So it's it's figuring out how I can get that same lift um, in a clay piece that's as you know that weight is the Oh, yes. uh, teeth in get the teeth in the i'm exploring weight in yeah. a big way in three-dimensional form yeah. um and it's a very different language which is a visual language in in a very light um mark on a mm. piece of paper which is flat and you can do whatever you want with this it's mm. really it's a really different language mm. so hopefully some of those bits of language might might link but some of them don't some of them don't work mm. you know this is this is a very different a very different artist you yeah. know I think and I yeah. think this is more of my voice than this one yeah yeah does that make sense yeah it does it goes back to that select and reject thing again yeah. doesn't it and all all you know, the time like... the more you fine tune your voice it's through practicing and and, and selecting and rejecting yeah. parts and and yeah I've got this I've got this idea I don't mind I'm gonna go off on one Come I've got on, this idea it. um of just looking at this balance here mm. um of this big shape, this weighty shape, and then it's going to be boxed in, mm -hmm. um, but with using um, metal rods and all sorts of things. So, so it's and how do I get that in this big sculpture, which is really weighty? Mm -hmm. You know, and you can see that it's starting to collapse in on here, but that's mm -hmm. okay. That's right. It's just drying out, and I'll do that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it's the question the answer I hope that's answered the question I think it has. and also you are extending because you remember you were talking about how you could push your price point up and Sharon started to push her, her ceiling piece you know her showstopper up by using bronze <clears> which <throat> is yeah. moving away from her known media so it's really interesting and I think it's it's a good to just point here that Sharon is far down the pathway yeah. of her career yeah. and I think this is why I always just keep bringing back to Sharon five years ago wasn't doing all these things wasn't planning three years in advance so I don't want people to sit there thinking oh my gosh I can't do that because you grow into this <laughs> six years now isn't it probably six wasn't six. it actually I keep yeah, saying five but it was five years ago seven. when we set up United Art Space that's when we were sitting doing our lives really that was just five years <gasps> ago when we were sat doing the Thursday lives and you were just then reclaiming, trying the galleries yeah. and things like that. So yeah. you hadn't really at that point I taken off all over the place. Yeah. Just, just so it was only in. five years ago. That's it. Yeah. I still yeah. feel like I'm on the yeah. beginning of my journey actually. Yeah. I bet. But you, but, but it's a different, when you see where you've transformed from though, in yeah. the last five years alone. I'm also going to um, say, um, just one other thing as well. I, f I do feel like once I've got a collection or a body of work together, um, not all of them make it into that show. So there's a selecting and rejecting thing. And mm. that happens between myself and my mentors. Mm. So I have mentors, um, you know, just talking about what's what's more, um, what what is it saying? Mm. And if it, you know, how is it, how does it fit with the other pieces? And if it doesn't, mm. it doesn't go into the collection. Mm. And, and number two, oh, what was the other one? Oh, there's two things. Oh, I do this a lot. <laughs> number one was... Um, I've forgotten. It'll I've come forgotten. back as we talk again. Yeah, it will. But I think that's a good point, though, isn't it? And actually, one that I was questioning at the oh, beginning of the year. I'm gonna say it quick before it goes. <laughs> before it goes. Um, if I make a hundred sculptures, I like one of them the most. You know, so one of them, I think, oh, that's a gem. I love that, and then that will then feed into the next collection. Mm. So, not all of them are my best pieces. It's mm. just up to that point. This is the best I can do at this moment in time mm -hmm. and then one of them will be better there'll be something in there that i think i'm going to i'm going to use that as the as a pivot or as the seed to grow another 
body of work, you know, yeah. go off on a little tangent. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it does. And I think so there's, prob- good. <laughs> there's probably a lot of people sitting there thinking, at the beginning of the year then, you set off on this journey of going, right, I'm going to explore movement, I want to increase the scale, yeah. but you've got all these shows put in. Yeah. Like, how do you create then on the basis that these works bigger scale might not turn out okay. <laughs> um, i've got my jobs i've got have a jobs sheet so on in my workshop i have oh i can't do it there we go yeah there's jobs the job sheet. sheet where's my finger going <laughs> it's all opposite <laughs> job sheet and i've got <clears throat> this one is for 2021 and it should be it'll be feeding into 2022 i haven't got 2023 up there yet um and i tick it all off as i go so um i have a big body of work so i have a main i have a main body of work you know yeah. so a big show and that will that will have been planned in um the previous year or the year before yeah so i'm growing i'm learning i'm exploring some of them don't make it into the into the kiln never mind into the into the show yeah um <laughs> so so I know I've got a lot of time to practice and explore that. So that's like a yeah. slow grower. Yeah, your playtime. Um, that's and... my slow grower mm. and that's like my main focus. Yeah. And then around that, I kind of like have satellite satellite um, projects mm. that then go in little shows. So little group exhibitions or maybe a pop festival, you know, a little festival that's just me selling work mm. in an exhibition alongside lots of other potters and ceramicists and yeah. artists. Um, but it's selected, you know, it's all selected and it's mm. planned in, definitely. Mm. Um, Sandra <coughs> asks, what proportion of your time do you spend creating versus all the organising, pro- promoting and networking? It's a 50-50. Yeah, that's 50/50. really easy to, that's really easy to, um, yeah. to answer. So 50% of the time is, you've got to obviously have the work to sell it. <laughs> mm. So you've got to put the effort in and that mm. doesn't kind of switch off, but the practical side of it does. Yeah. Um, so I have a very strict, um, if my daughter's at school um, and I'm in, the, I have to be in the workshop. So my day starts um, at um, nine o'clock and I mm. finish at, I have a break to pick up my daughter from school and then I go back in the evening mm. to work. So it's mm. my work time. So physically, I'm more active. My brain is a bit more fresh, so I can do my admin in the mornings. So before yeah. I met Michelle yeah. this morning, I was admin. I was, um, I was, um, I was chatting to some customers yeah. um, and some potential customers. Yeah, and um, doing some social media and editing photographs. You know, yeah. so so yeah. my mind is more active in the morning. Yeah. And then you come and then, to the studio and, and then it's like a Because nice... you work better here. You're a night owl, aren't you? Do, so yeah. is that when do you think you make your best work on an evening? Sometimes, but not all the time now. Right. Okay. I'm trying yeah. I'm trying not to be much yeah. of a night <laughs> owl these days. <laughs> Get to bed because it's earlier. exhausting. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. definitely 50 50. Forward, it's 50, important 50. though, isn't yeah. it? Like, they 50, make, 50. yeah, to be, and this is why I say, and um, we're covering this in the workshops, by the way. It's um, taking that time to understand your work, but then taking that time to really understand who to network with and who to put it in front of because it's yeah. so important to keep doing that every single week, every single day. Um, even if you segment your day so that you, maybe you've got two days of making and then the other two of getting it out there you know yeah. if you've got to yeah. do it that way it's whatever works for you if you've got a full-time job then it's going to be and um, that's what we did years ago we had the jobs and we would do it all this on a night time and at weekends and so it's just splitting <laughs> whatever time you've got I guess then into two isn't it and yeah, yeah. Um, Which is sometimes why... you might be more focused on the making um yeah and then you come out of that and you work into a season so strict no. It could be that you've done all the work and now it's now about gonna... promotion, so yeah. you don't actually get your hands on. Yeah. Hands on yeah. Which is yeah. why I don't, um, I mean, a lot of this is another conversation maybe, but with the 50% is selling and that's the commission. So when you mm. take your work to your gallery or if you give it someone else to do that work for you, that's the business side. Mm. Um, they earn that. Yeah, so I yeah. earn it um, yeah. just as much as anyone else. So if I pass over that um, part of the business, so mm. the you know, the getting of the little leaflets or the, mm. um, the little booklets together, which has got some writing in it. Mm. People write for me mm. sometimes, which is brilliant. And they that's that's fantastic. Mm. So, yeah. 
Great question. And then Great another question. one from Katie. Um, did you know at the beginning of the year what you will show in the shows during the year? Yes. So most, you of, most of it, it would have been made the previous year. Yeah. So the bigger pieces, you can't, I can't just, I can't do that fast. They yeah. have to have, um, they have to be made slowly in short bursts and then they have to dry out and then they have to go into the kiln mm -hmm. and then they have to be glazed and and then fired again then photographed then um, catalogued and then selected or rejected mm -hmm. and then they go to the show so it's a six month really it's a it's a long term i'm in it for the long the mm -hmm. long term it's a mm -hmm. long-term goal there's no there's no short quick yeah. you know cheat things in this game it's not yeah. a game it's a life yeah and it's yeah. worth doing it's like the advert yeah, yeah you know it's worth it if you're going to do it right you might as yeah. well just you know, do it really really well yeah to the best of your ability yeah and then you'll get the most out of it as well then yeah <laughs> and it's it's a fantastic job it's a fantastic life and so going back to katie's question so you will say, let's just take an example of a show that you've just had that you mm -hmm. sold out mm -hmm. of. When did you start not planning quite, that? Was not it, quite sold out. Well, <laughs> was it the January before, nearly? Was it the January before that you started no. to <clears throat> I knew, plan that work? I knew about it the previous year. So mm -hmm. um, so I knew that there was going to be, um, it was called Pitchford Hall, so Art in the Orangery at Pitchford Hall in Shropshire. And it's um, it was with a gallery, 2020 Gallery, um, who I'm represented with in Shropshire. And um, um, so Mary, who owns the gallery, Mary and Hugh, um, they approached me and, a, and other artists, really brilliant artists, um, to take part in a group exhibition at the Orangery at Pitchford Hall. So it's in a state and it's a beautiful, beautiful building, beautiful place. Um, and um, so I knew about it last year which is it would have been before lockdown um maybe was that last year what year are we in are we in 2020 2021 <laughs> <laughs> we don't do I numbers don't round numbers. here by the way yeah <laughs> i don't know um i knew 18 months before and then i would make the work so it's i know that i know that if i've got a year then i've got enough time to make the work and then it then six months in, the gallery wants to see how I'm getting on. So we have gallery, you know, we have visits, you know, and we have conversations about it. And, you know, and so they, they get to know what I'm making and um, get to know how they can reach their buyers, you know, mm. and reach their clients mm. who and to invite them in and how, how the catalogue might work out. Mm. And as it turns out, I made a lot of, I made, I always make more, than, than I need so that can be that selection rejection process and then um, hopefully that will be whittled down into a group that we both think oh this is this is good it's good body of work to show and then we talk about it we write about it long statements short statements um, catalogue editing numbered really clear numbers in fact Mary tells me off all the time because I never do this very well um, it's not my strength. I'm just laughing because anything with numbers, we're both terrible. We're trying to add up. We're, we're trying to times 100 by 10 or something once. We, <laughs> we're we're like, uh, we know we have to add another uh, note at the end, but we still couldn't work it out. It's, very, it's really funny. Yeah, don't ask us anything no, about maths or numbers. Maths. Dates. No. I have to add up. Um, so <clears throat> Helen asks, what yep. made you choose sculpture? So this is going back to our conversation earlier, if you've just tuned in, when Sharon was having shows and she had paintings and trees and figures and portraits and ceramics and boats and birds. Um, and so, yeah, what, okay. ha, what made you then just refine it back to, okay, I'm going to focus on figurative sculpture. Well, uh, it's a great question. Um, the short version is that I showed Mary from 2020 gallery, who I'm represented by now, um, my work um, after three years of knocking on her door going, let me in, let me in. I love you. I love your gallery and I love what they were doing. And I really thought, oh, my work is going to be brilliant. I want to be part of this, you know, this gallery because they're just so good. They're just good. Um, and I had a conversation with Mary. I showed some paintings and some sculpture. And um, and after that, she said, I really like your paintings, Sharon, but I really think that you, you're doing something quite interesting, exciting. I'm excited about your ceramics. So that was it. That was the short version. Mm. The long version is that I enjoy both 
for different reasons. Um, I love pushing oil paints around a board and around a canvas and mm. to, you know and, and take it off oh. and push it back on again. Yeah, and you know I've I've I've, I've put some in competitions and you know won first prizes for them, which is great. Yeah, I remember um, you getting a her. few times, mm. but. I am more excited about clay. Mm. I just, it's clay is my, just, I just get excited about it. It grounds me mm. and it's a different, maybe it's a different process. I know it is. When I'm making something in clay, I get lost and I get you, that euphoric feeling mm. of I am in a, I am in a different world. And I know that you all know this feeling mm. because when it works, it's just the best feeling in the oh, world. When I hear you ever. describe it, it just takes me oh, there. I'm like, so oh. It's like, oh feeling of just switching off it's from everything just saying pure pure joy so and i and i don't get that so much with the painting mm -hmm. and that maybe that's that's why now, i love jennifer's tuning in sat under an apple tree <coughs> lovely that sounds delightful oh, kind of are you eating them someone's tuning in from rome edinburgh it's lovely to have Hi. you all here so mark asks a great question how much should i rely on galleries some would say if you're selling straight from social media it can do you harm so this is what we'll cover more in the workshops, these kind of questions. But from your point of view, Sharon, I don't you think, do both, don't yeah, you? I don't think you should rely on anyone. Mm, I think you should point. rely on yourself mm. and then and find out what works for you. Mm. Um, but if I, if I, I have come out of some galleries because um, I just feel that it's not right, it's not the right place for my work. Mm. So my long-term goal and short-term needs my long-term goal is that, you know, Tate Modern would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Imagine filling that turbine hall in, in Tate Modern in London. That'd be brilliant. That would be a dream. So that's my long-term goal, <laughs> obviously. Um, but maybe to get there, I need some people that are going to help me on my way and have the same vision as me. So some of the galleries don't have that vision. They just want my work because it sells and, you know, just make some money. I'm not really in it for just the money. I like I like having money. I like having enough to not have to worry about my mortgage payments mm -hmm. and my my gas, electric, water utility bills. And if my van breaks down, um, I know I can get it fixed. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a lot of money, but I have enough that I very comfortably, you know, live on. Mm -hmm. um, which is which is my point. But what I am most, most excited about is to use this art as a platform to talk about everybody's um, needs and everybody's experience of being human. That's where, mm. that's where I want to be. And mm. some of the galleries don't do that. They just want it because it sells. Yeah, so that's yeah. number one. If you're selling straight from a social media platform, it can do you harm. Um, I think so there are there are some things that you can't do so if you're with a gallery there's got to be a really good trust relationship there that is that you've both got the same vision um, they allow you to explore different avenues of your art and they support you and mentor you that's the gallery that you definitely have to have if um, if you are selling through that gallery and a piece of work has been in that gallery for a while and you've um, and it's part of a collection or a group showing that piece of work has to still be sold through that gallery because they worked their ass off to get it there. Okay, oh, they should be. Yeah, that's yeah. How it should be. Yeah. So you must be loyal to the your people mm -hmm. who support you. Mm -hmm. If it's if someone has come through from that gallery to you, you have to send them back to the gallery and say, "I would, you know." So a commission, perhaps. It's happened a lot. So if people have come through me, um, through to me through my social media and say, oh, I saw your work at Finney Park or at 2020 Gallery or, you know, would you be able to do a commission? So if they have done that, then I will go back to the gallery and say, you know, I've had a commission. What do you think about it? Would you like, you know, 25 percent or 50 percent because they've come through you? They are essentially they they belong they are the client of that gallery they that paid gallery for the marketing works, yeah well they paid to, so yeah, hard to yeah. get those those people and they have yeah. anyway so that's yeah one. yeah yeah um if they haven't and you want to sell through social media you can mm. um i like to i like to do um if i'm selling through social media which is not very often or off my website I like to sell something that's little. So if I'm having a bit of a dry spell or if I haven't got anything to do or there's a charity that needs some money, 
then I'll make some charity pots or some some little things or send some mm. little bits out into the world mm. because it makes me feel good. Mm. You know, um, if it, I have had a huge, huge commission um, to make about 10 large sculptures for a private client and they haven't come through any gallery. So that's all mine. Thank you very much. You know, I will work with the with the client and um, go and visit and draw and paint and study and make maquettes and work with them. And mm. I will be earning that 50% commission. Mm. So I hope that helps. Mm. But I don't know. I think you should trust trust yourself. Mm. But it is, it is a good point, isn't it? Because there are some galleries that can get, <clears throat> um, what's the word? I get a little bit defensive maybe if you do start selling because there are people out there that will take advantage of putting in a gallery and then trying to sell themselves and and depends on what you want to do with it. And you that, know, I want to, if I want to be in the Tate Modern, yeah, I need a gallery to lift me up. Yeah, and you don't necessarily need Can't a gallery. Gallery, you can do it all through social media if yeah. you want to. There's lots of people that do that. Yeah. Um. So there was a couple of things here. Um, <clears throat> Let me just see where have they gone. Yeah, Sandra was saying it's refreshing to hear how normal your week sounded. I, I think that so many people share that experience of making time to create, then finding that creativity doesn't flow. I, do you know, for, for me, and I don't know about you, but that 50-50 part of the marketing, if you make it as fun as possible and make it with your people like you have, which is what we're going to teach in the workshops mm. next from Thursday, it actually becomes a really enjoyable process. Like I bet when you were chatting with your customers this morning and you were, you know, yeah. it's some really it's great really, conversations. Really, really nice and enriching. They send, and... Me, they send me loads of really amazing information about wings. You know, if I yeah. post anything on social yeah. media, I've got like loads of people saying, well, if you check this person out, yeah. like, this is great. I don't even have to go and look for it. It gets given to me. Yeah. This information yeah. is so good. So you you, you should, people are yeah. lovely. They're my they're my friends, they're my extended, they're yeah. my art family. It's good. Once you start to really find your people, and that's what the workshops are all about, it starts to just feel like it's all part of one big thing, not that, oh, I've got to do this now. It becomes really exciting, like, oh, I'm going to find more people and have conversations, mm. and that's how it should feel, um, which is why I'm running these workshops to make you feel that way about your work and get excited about it. Um, and Camille was saying about choosing... You know how you develop your work but still keep that consistency with previous pieces I guess Sharon answered that a little bit earlier about the select and reject and so she's not changing works completely it's, it's evolving like a, isn't it if you imagine I imagine my work as a as a if you imagine as a as a tree let's have a look at this lovely tree it's got many branches but essentially it's the same tree mm. you know so the tree is my clay mm. and the human voice you know the human experience um, I put it on my vision board. So my work is about life and it's about being human, the experience of being human. Mm. Um, and I use the vehicle of clay and of the human form and face to have conversations about being human mm. with other people. Mm. So that, that's that tree. And it's got many branches to it. There's so many different avenues yeah. that you can go and explore. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming and you don't know which one to do. So then you have to just go, right. I'm just, focus yeah focus on this is this yeah, year yeah the rest you know can't do everything because actually <laughs> the more simplified you make everything the yeah. easier your life becomes yeah. <laughs> you know the less I you know it's not about not having less ideas it's like having all the ideas oh. and then reining it back because the more you just simplify it all honestly the more you'll create more ideas and creativity yeah. in space it's, it's funny isn't it rain says I feel myself stuck and oh this one I just want to say we've we've come across this and we all started this way of recreating, which is great that you start there. You recreate with people's work. We still do that now because yep. it's still part of the process of recreating <clears throat> other people's things. This is what Sharon teaches in Make Your Mark, actually. Her course is all about you making your own mark, um, but that's not running right now. So in the meantime, um, Sharon is gathering some things I'm here just, to I'm gonna show you an, just a, just an example to give you an example yeah of how you can start stepping away from imitating other people to finding your own your own voice um and it's completely normal and you'll still will imitate other people i remember you you still look at other people's work and figure out how they're doing things and okay so i i love artists i love jenny savile I love um, Kiki Smith. I love um, Jim Dine and artists who use um, lots of energy. Um, I love Tracy Emin. I'm going to go and see Paula Rago. 
um, on Thursday. I'm missing it. I know. <laughs> um, so I love other artists. I totally understand. So when you when you look at so I look at artists who are already established and they are makers. I don't tend to look, and I try actually to avoid. Um, if anybody says, "Oh, your work is like such and such," I don't look at it. I don't. I don't go down that rabbit run. I say thank you very much for sharing me that link, but I'm not going to look at it just because I think I'm going to get really, really influenced by it because I lo I love it so much. And then inadvertently, that that love will then come out in my hands, and then it'll look like someone else's. So I totally understand that. Um, so what I like to do is I like to first of all look at other artists that are readily available. Um, for everybody to see and they've been written about so I can understand where their ideas are from. Can we where ideas ideas from? from? Um, I think so. Um, Claire Clonine. Let me just remove. Claire Clonine is a, is a, a fantastic um, um, ceramic artist so she fires her clay and I've always had a, I've always been a fan of Claire Clonine's work. Um, I don't look at it too much now, though, because I feel like I'm going down that rabbit run of too, maybe it's going yeah, to be too. I'm going to be influenced too much. So she's like a nod in reference now. I don't read yeah, her. Yeah, I just want to yeah. know about her life. Yeah, really. I've done that now with people. I purposely <clears throat> don't look anymore because you get mm. too influenced. <laughs> Kathy Colwitz. Um, Kathy Colwitz was an artist in the, um, um, in the late 1800s who was drawing things from life that was happening around her really big big heavy kind of dark um you know experiences of being human so then what i do is i draw from the book um and i draw the parts of um the book that i really like um and then i and then i write about it um this is the weaver's revolt in 1897 by Kathy colwitz and it's called the it's riot and i really like the energy of the dagger in the hand and the neck that's just like, I'm going to come and get you. And she's going, she's holding her baby in her arms. And I like the energy of that. I'm not going to represent, I'm not going to make it. I just like the energy of it. So I'm going to take the energy that is similar in Kathy Colwitz's work. And then I'm going to hopefully try and get some of that energy in my own work. So it's not, it's not copying. It's, it's understanding the idea behind the work first. How is that artist approached that thought that feeling that um witness to what's going on around them and what and how is it what how is it that they're um doing that so it's not necessarily what they're doing the end result is the the art it's the why they're doing it so mm. I'm just, it's the why i guess I and that's that and that's sense. how you develop your voice by taking something from someone here, from a picture yeah. that you took yesterday, from some somewhere <laughs> else, and you take all these influences into your own piece. So, what could be a good thing for you now is to look back at your pieces and start to that select and reject. Select what do you like about this, and then from all those pieces, create a new piece. Just mm. taking parts, yeah. just paint and maybe a bit of red over here from one piece and a bit of whatever from another piece, and you start to. I just want to take just going to take that further. Mm. Don't mind. Yeah, of course. Um, so mm -hmm. Kathy Colwitz got lots of energy um, and lots of darkness, and that led me to watching um, something on the telly. So I was looking at dispatches and and then drawing from the telly. So these are my images, and they're my um, responses to something that Kathy Colwitz and Claire Canine and other people that I you know I'm drawn to um, but they're my they're my drawings now and that's how I'm going to develop it into a three-dimensional form does that mm, does yeah that it really help? does help it's great isn't it don't you love to see you know there's like all the there's there's you draw from the ideas. telly just drawn mm. budgies I've got mm. loads of loads of things you can get your inspiration from everywhere you can, but it's knowing yeah. why why yeah. you, why are you drawn to another artist's work in the first place yeah and what that. is it that they that you're drawn to that artist's work hello Sonia took me your mark so <laughs> Sonia's had a, a, a long break a couple of months hello. so I couldn't move forward with the seven keys because I didn't feel like I had enough artwork but I'm so inspired mm. by you today and I'll start again please do and Sonia you don't need lots of artwork to take the seven keys you need just one because the seven keys, actually, the, the more you go through it will help you understand what your collection needs to be. And when you start with one artwork or even just three, you start to carve out your place and your people and then they'll give you ideas. And that's how Sharon started when she was learning from Mary. It's going through those seven keys 
helps you go back through the why and the what all the time yeah. and delve deeper and deeper. And so I would just get stuck in. <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. It. do it, do it, do it, do it. Just um, don't overthink it. No, don't you don't need too. lots of you don't need lots of art. Oh, that's no. um um hello. So ladies, you are just a juice for life. I love it. I've been in an art group for four years and felt stuck. I decided to go to college, starting on the 29th of September. Amazing. Need motivation. Fantastic. Had all summer on the beach. Wow, oh, lovely goodness. with the grandkids. More inspired than ever, Michelle and Sharon. I'm blessed that I came across a virtual art studio in the hub. Honestly. Oh, you saved my life. I'm in the best place I've ever been. Sending you love to all. Oh, oh my gosh, you just made me all like, oh. Yeah, it's. I almost um, don't I'm just believe so... it. <laughs> I almost don't believe that. I'm just so glad that. Yeah, um, no, that's just amazing. And can I just circle back to um, <laughs> why I run these free workshops and do what I do for posts like that and to influence people and impact people? Because people always, at this time, I get a lot of stick behind the scenes going, oh, she's full of rubbish. She just wants to take your money. Don't trust this. You know, I understand it because there are so many people out there doing dodgy mm. things, mm. but I take a lot of stick during this time. And it's, and the reason I do the free workshops, I've been doing them for years because I really love it. <laughs> it's like, it's as simple as that. I love it. And yeah, there's a course that we sell and make, Sharon's got Make Your Mark and I've got a course and there's things that we do, but that's not the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Um, we develop those things to help people. But when we show up and do these live sessions and we have that kind of response, it's the most fulfilling thing in the world, isn't that it? That's really, so, really important. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm, I'm really excited to hear how college goes and just take everything that you feeding in from us into that and let us know um I it's remember, exciting I remember when you came to the pottery so I I run a pottery I don't really run it anymore it just runs itself and it I does, just like it? hang out yeah. and play with some mud <laughs> 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 um, but when you came to me I said, sure, I've got this idea I would like to you know because you you actually did the physical the physical you run physical workshops for people yeah, enabling yeah. people to access um their own little space mm. um that is that's yeah. outside of the house you know in in ironbridge and mm. and that was amazing but then when it, mm. it broke down or it yeah. just got disbanded yeah and you're like let's do it let's do it and you said i said oh i know a few people from telford that would might like to do that she said you said no no global we want to take it global <laughs> we want to reach people all over the world it's really it's really good because I was a teacher for a long time, a long time. And it's so, so good to share art um, because everybody can do it. And this art thing, it's not being funded by government. It's not being promoted in our schools or universities or colleges. It's just being failed. It's not just about the visual arts. It's about music, about mm. theatre. It's mm. about play. And mm. it's it's a terrible world to be in. Mm. So... This art sharing is a very, very passionate thing that both Michelle and I do. Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely. It's just life changing. And, and it yeah. really is. I'm not even <clears throat> over exaggerating because, um, well, don't get me started. It's just so many reasons for yeah. yourself, for the others that enjoy your work, for yeah. the potential it actually has. There is so much potential to do so much with your art on so many levels, yeah. not just making money from it, just so many ways it enriches our souls and the souls of others like you can't get with other mediums and other ways of communicating it's just powerful and everything it, so. you see yeah taste hear smell look at feel oh. touch has been designed or created by an artist from this... the toothbrushes that we have to mm. the chairs we sit on so this is another great question. So the, the sketches and planned work are really interesting. Have or are you showing these as well? Not yet. Um, I I think off the back of um, the the most recent exhibition that I had at Pitchford Hall, um, the Art in the Orangery with 2020 Gallery, um, I think Mary and I are talking about whether I would like to show two-dimensional work and have a just a solo show in mm. the gallery mm. and I think it'd be quite interesting I always I always really like to know what's happened before you get to I want to know the process mm. before you get to the end result mm. you know that 
that end result is just the end result of years and years and years of thoughts and discoveries and playing and mm. um and i i i almost want to see some of that mm. but and I did a I did a, an exhibition uh, not an exhibition I did a workshop I I took part in a workshop in Paris and I went to um, the Orangery in um, in Paris which has got lots of big monies in it it's it's made for Monet's work and we went to his garden and we looked at um, composition and color and just that composition you know just just made me go what. That's incredible mm -hmm. and mind blowing. I saw Monet's work in a completely different way. It was a real pivotal moment, and it was a cold wax workshop. And the cold wax is about layers and then scraping back and layers and scraping back. And it was a it was an abstract cold wax workshop. And those pieces of work that I have that are experimental in response to Monet's garden and his work um, actually now inform the way that I apply glaze is and work into the surfaces of the clay mm. so i guess i guess at some point yes that mm. would be interesting to show mm. and talk about too yeah i'm going to run through questions now because yeah, we're running sorry. out of time we do chat don't we yeah and I there's like lots it. of great questions coming in so we'll start answering these as fast as we can <laughs> in the next couple of minutes so um helen said that i feel people would buy my art but i don't know where to start sign up for the workshops on thursday because that's where to start absolutely yes. is i do everything michelle does um, <laughs> um how do you find a mentor i'm going to answer that during the workshops and i'll come back to your comment as well because um i've got a lot to say on that um too much to say in this session but basically the workshops will help you find mentors those steps that i teach scotty's got a quick question here could you talk more about how you bring your internal thoughts emotions and experiences to the exterior and as a piece of art that's a great question yep. great question here it is in a nutshell uh, let's get one of these um <clears throat> this one sorry oh this one doesn't really matter um uh, what i have is i have many 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 sketchbooks and i call them brain dumps so what i do is i um i respond so i respond through drawings through um through mark making through playing through um visual stimulation so get it all down out my brain into a sketchbook and then what i do is i like to select and reject or think about them so this one not sure if you know this, but this is um, thought processes about being still and about being moving. I'm going off on a tangent. Rain me in again, please, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I do this quite a lot. It's all right. I it? think no. So it's about That's how you bring the emotion. the emotion. So so your feelings and emotions, how they translate into a final piece. Make fast. Um, to make fast, and not overthink it. Not yeah. overthink it and then leave it. If in doubt, I just leave it. And, and I away. think it's all this, this um, the vision board yeah. as well. So having that around, so yeah. gathering your feelings and writing them and then yeah. having them in front of you and contemplating, would you say? Um, so Nicola's asking mm. here, hopefully that's answered your question. I'm making more commercial work in porcelain and selling at art fairs, shops and galleries, my bread and butter, but want to make higher end, more abstract ceramics. So how do I get a balance of making these two? Do it carve out a day a time a week give, give yourself a, an intense play time of going right i've done all this stuff i'm up to date with my shows i've got enough money in the bank i'm going to give myself a, a bit of time to just go yeah i'm going to play yeah which is really hard to do because what we do is we go back on what we know and, and like it's really difficult is this going to make me money is this going to be here yeah is you've got to have that play oh, time hard. without expectation isn't it and i would set so you've got your focus here i want to make more abstract pieces <clears throat> that are kind of like a higher end there you go pin that on a board yeah and then maybe you carve out a friday morning where you just focus on that project make it a project as well of how am i going to do this and then slowly the time will grow to maybe then it's 50 percent of your time you're working on those pieces and Maybe you stop doing the others. Who knows? It's exciting. It's nice it to have, um, have like a deadline for it as well. So you've got. Yeah, um, yeah, yes. You've got Deadlines are good. Deadline. Because you could spend the next five yeah. years trying to explore uh, uh, more abstract pieces. Like if there's a show, a deadline. is there a show, a group show, an open call or something that you'd like to put something <coughs> completely different in? So you've got, mm. you've got to make something towards something. So. Mm. so do you end up selling the one in 100 pieces that trigger your inspiration? Yeah, sell a lot yeah absolutely yeah sell it i'll take a photo um, i can't keep everything I, obviously my workshop is very very crafted 
Um, yeah, so we've answered quite a lot of the questions now. I guess maybe it's like an adoption. I see that a lot of people adopt my work, you know, and give them a home, and then I keep in touch with them. So I don't feel like it's they've ever gone away. I feel like they're just being shared with other people. Yeah, Sharon's represented by a few galleries now. Yeah, and you sell it art two, fairs. I'm yeah. represented by two galleries. Um, I think maybe if there's there's so there's two galleries that I'm represented by. And there's a difference between these two galleries. What they do is they write for me. They give me a solo show. Um, so it gives me like a, a a way to put all of my work together. It's really intense. I get private views. So in invites to, um, so people actually come and see me specifically, um, because my work is there. And um, they put out catalogues and they do a lot of work for me. There are other galleries that I am in, but that I'm not represented by because they're not the kind of gallery that do the catalogues that represent. They don't do in much work for you, to be honest. They just sell them, mm -hmm. sell the pieces. And they don't have much of my attention, if I'm honest. I love them. They're really lovely people, but it's just about commercial selling. And can I just say that a few years ago, <clears throat> though, Sharon found the one outlet first got the one representation it yeah. starts small yeah. starts small and then you build up and you build up to all the places but you the workshops this is what we're going to teach you is to make those first steps make that first connection make get going um and that will expand and grow from there just want to um to add that bit on this is a great one i'm gonna have to bring sharon in on this one though um what are the, your biggest limits and how do you push past them at the moment let's say you're one biggest moment, limit biggest limit is um size of my workshop i really want to go large but i can't like when i went to cornwall and the garden yeah. and everything i was thinking sharon would absolutely love it here <laughs> so i'm i'm making plans um there are other options to go bigger so i'd like to go bigger at the moment i'm i'm kind of um half life size i can get to that point but anything bigger i'm struggling with the the clay so it's skills um, I've got to practice my skills and just keep at it. A lot of it gets, you know, on the in the bin. Um, it explodes in the kiln or it just doesn't. You know, there's a lot of hurdles to get over them. And what I do is if it's not working out, I have a break and I just make something that I know. Give myself a break and then ah, I've got like something that's nice. Mm. And then I go back to it and um, renting out a space, a different space just for a certain amount of time would be good. Yeah. Do you find that people... <laughs> you make work that you don't like and then people love it oh well, yeah we'll just say yeah Some it must happen it must happen it must happen oh. yeah <laughs> Actually, i do hate it i don't sell it i just smash it with a hammer it goes do you? No, yeah. don't tell me that yeah. oh no no yeah. no um so how much time on social media roughly 10 minutes 20 minutes a day in the morning usually and then again in the, in the night yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so about about an hour a day, would you say? You know, in, split between the morning yeah, and the night time. Not yeah. so much at the moment, just because you work I'm in seasons, a break. don't yeah. you? So when Sharon's going into promotion mode, she'll be on it a lot more. I guess yeah. you ramp up, don't yeah. you? The conversations. Yeah. Do you need formal art, ed art education to make it? No. no, no, you don't. I mean, there are millions, billions, maybe of people out there with no just art education. Really need confidence in yeah, and believe what you do. Belief and practice, love. practice practice and practice 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 i mean there's a there's an artist i just came across last week temper who is from the uk he's making millions he's actually a millionaire from graffiti art and he's no tra he's not trained he was homeless um and yeah he just goes out there and does what he does so you yeah it, and i always say desire is more important than talent and if you've got the desire to do something get it out there and you're yeah. passionate people feel the passion yeah. um and that's what we're going to be talking about in the workshops and helping you connect with that passion it's really really important it's fun band, isn't um it? yeah i'm just going to just right we're going to wrap up now um so let me just see if i've missed anything um um don't normally <laughs> join <doing> groups <laughs> oh, let's just get this up greg i need greg. to read this properly hi Hello. michelle and sharon i wasn't sure when sharon popped up on my facebook and invited me to united arts base don't normally risk joining groups as many are dodgy they are but something special what sharon was saying at the time when i'm at the crossroads with my art that got me 
I get such a high from my Facebook friends liking and loving my work, which keeps me going and in a circle with the same people and then fall into a flat spot without sales. So happy I joined. We're so happy that you found us. Um, this is why we do what we do, because all of those things you've just said, so normal, so normal. Um, and now you're here and we can share everything with each other. We've got such a, a supportive community. Um, it's a really special thing, isn't it? Yeah. Finding people, finding a tribe. Yeah. It really is. It's, you know, you can't, even if, you know, it's not, oh, we really need everybody in our life to be supportive of us. Mm. You know, we need our friends, our family, but we also need, um, we also need the people that are supporting us and giving us honest feedback about things mm. and giving us help. We need help. We can't do it by ourselves. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah. This one last question, and I'm going to go because um, we've got to we've got to let Sharon do some work. She's in making mode at the moment, and yeah. I've stole I've stolen an hour of her time. Um, but this, I'm th loving it though. I'm loving it. I know you do. I know. <laughs> you go, go, go. I know. Uh, do but do you feel that you need to explain your work? And so again, we're going to talk about this in the workshops. Mm. And I just think, what do you think to this? But I think there's a bit of both. And I just, your artwork won't speak for itself. That's a fact. It won't. And especially in today's world, there is so much art in the world. There are so many people seeing things that your art won't speak for itself, which is why I run these workshops, because you have to be able to articulate your work. You've got to be connected to it and you've got to be able to write about it and speak about it. Um which doesn't have to be scary. It's literally just being authentic and just sharing your voice and what you do and your process. And it doesn't have to be academic. It doesn't have to be um, sounding like you are up here. You know, it just has to be real and raw. And um, that being said, I still think there is a place for not sharing everything. And if you want people to interpret your work, there is th that's part of your mm -hmm. process. It's like, why do you want people to read it? Where are you going to put your work so people read it? Because it's quite an intimidating thing to do. So you need to put your work in the places where people like to read artwork and they like to interpret it because not everyone does. And I just think that when you do share some, though, and you share your why, you will connect with people. People buy art and engage with it because they connect on an emotional level. We went to see an exhibition recently with Tracy Emin, oh, and we looked at it with you know, with eyes of not understanding why she made it in our own interpretation. But then when we read about it, gosh, we had such a different yeah. feeling and connection yeah. to it that was so, so powerful. And um, and and just, I don't know, it was just off the scale then, wasn't it? I the, think, the... <laughs> I, I do think this is a bloody brilliant question because it's so personal. When we look at a piece of artwork, we bring our own story to that piece of artwork. We are a mirror to it. So when we go and see Tracy Emin, we are a mirror to that. So we we see it mm. with our own experiences mm. and our own perceptions and you know preconceived ideas of what it is or should be. Um, when I read your when I read the the writer the bit of writing the question, Scotty, um, do you feel like you need to explain your work? I thought I read it as a a vocal. You know, do you need to explain it as in terms of a person mm. to person, face mm. to face? Mm. Um, and when I'm at an art fair, um, so I do pottery festivals, which are ceramic, big selected ceramic festivals that are all over the UK and Europe. But um, And they are such a good opportunity to meet people and talk about work um, because people want to, want to know about art. They want to know your story. They want to know why you made it. They want to know what it's made from, how you did it, you know, what's the idea behind it. Mm. And some people just don't, so they don't ask the question. Mm. They just come in and they go, I'll have that one. Yeah. So you can kind of gauge. Mm. Um, so I think initially when I first started out, I didn't reveal everything. Mm. Um, and there's been a, quite a lot of trauma in my life, which was the catalyst for me to give up teaching and go into making art for a living. Mm. Um, and initially I thought, I'm not going to reveal everything. But then over time I thought, no, actually, it's really important. This is this is important for me to say. And my biography is on my website for everybody to read. You know, warts and all, it's there. Mm. And um, if people want to go and see it or want to know about the ideas behind the work or or about the, the, the artist that's making it, then it's up to them to do it. I think it should be their choice. I hope that helps. It was, I'm just laughing at this comment that oh. came in. <laughs> From my serious, serious art chat. No, to, no. Let's... <laughs> we don't... 
I just show? We do. We do go. We're going now, and Sorry. then we, we keep talking. That was but our that was our timer, wasn't yeah, it? We've been doing these live sessions now <laughs> for five years, and every Thursday night we used to just chat like this every hours Thursday night. Hours. But they used to one night. I think it went on for three hours. It did, didn't it? We went. Oh, we've been talking for three hours. Everyone was still listening. Uh, but anyway, right. <laughs> we are literally going to wrap it up now. We are going to wrap it up. I'm going to put some tape over her mouth and. Uh, I'm a fun one to talk. Um, so, no, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Sharon, oh, this amazing ooh, human, for sharing ooh. all of her knowledge thank and, you, you know, being so open and honest about her process. Because isn't it amazing to just hear from other people how they work? Oh, it's so sweet. enlightening. And I always, I never get tired of hearing about how Sharon works either. I've, you know, I always just find it so, so inspiring. So thank you, Thanks. Sharon. Thank you so much. So the workshops start on Thursday and everything that I teach in these workshops, honestly, is going to help you. It's going to help you really get passionate about what you do, get fired up, help you find your people. It's the most important thing um, is to start to carve out your own place in the art world. It's possible for anyone educated or not, um, whether you do glass, sculpture, dark, mystical, honestly, there's a place for you yes. in the world. Yes. So there's one piece of artwork and I've seen people asking, do I, do I need to submit? You don't need to submit the artwork, it's for you. I'm gonna share videos and workshops with you so you can go through the process. We'll be here to support you. There is a Facebook group. I've emailed you the link. So there's a Facebook group, if you're on Facebook, that you can sign up to for the next couple of weeks to meet other people taking part if you're not on Facebook you might want to just set an account up just to open the group just for the two weeks but you don't have to take part in the Facebook group I know some people are adverse to it and I get it um so it's all on a website so you don't need to um be on social media if you don't want to but that one piece of work you can put it into the Facebook group but it is mainly for you to choose and work through the worksheets and the videos that I'm going to release over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be live a lot, helping you get through the workshops and you will take a lot from it. I promise you, you will take a lot from it and I can't wait. So tomorrow I'll be live at 6 p.m. UK time to do a little pre-party because I any excuse oh, to have a bit of a pre-party pre and I like to do end parties and I like oh. to do mid parties and boot camps and all the things. Oh, so, um, yes. So I will be back tomorrow at 6 PM. Don't worry if you can't watch that live. Everything's recorded. Um, the workshops are the main things anyway. So that starts at 11 o'clock on Thursday. So thank you so much for joining everybody. I will see you all very soon. If you haven't signed up for the workshops, the link is at the top and I will see you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Bye. -bye. Bye.